Let's take a look at these questions which primarily have to do with sidereal and synodic periods. So let's look at question one. If it takes Jupiter 13 years to orbit the Sun, how long in years will it take Jupiter to go once around the sky as viewed from the Earth? Now I have to say, even though the math could be um, pretty simple, I guess, in these questions, I actually find these questions really challenging both conceptually, but also because the math is deceptive. It looks really simple, but then you can get tripped up on some things. So the equation we're gonna be using in these cases here is this one over the sidereal period equals one over Earth's, this is the synodic period. See, that's one point of confusion is mixing up sidereal and synodic. So this is like the synodic period equals one over Earth's period minus one over the period of the planet. Now, conceptually what's happening here is, let's just say here's the sun, right? And Earth is going around here and it takes a year to go around, right? Well, Jupiter is out here. So let's just say this is the point when Earth is here and Jupiter is there. That's the point when Jupiter is on the exact opposite side of the sun on the sky, right? So when the sun is directly beneath your feet, Jupiter's straight overhead. Well, for Jupiter to get at that same spot, well, the Earth goes around, but while the Earth's going around, Jupiter has moved a little bit, right? So it's not going to take one year for this to happen. It's going to take a little bit more than a year for this to happen. And that's the kind of question we're getting. So we, we should have a sense of what to expect uh, as the right answer if we draw a little picture like this in our minds. So let's actually do the math and, and calculate how long in years it'll take Jupiter to go around once on our sky. All right, so what I would do is this. I've got my equation here, right there. And what I know is that I can always, well, I'm gonna use the units it gives me here, which is years. So for Earth, the period is one year. So I'll just write 1.0 years. For the planet, in this case Jupiter, its orbital period is 13 years. 13.0 years. All right, and now to do this calculation, I can plug this in. Now, this is where it's easy to get kind of tripped up, and I'm just going to use parentheses so that I don't get myself confused. All right, because whenever I'm dealing with fractions like this, it's easy to get myself tripped up. So. For this case, 1 over Earth is going to be just 1 over 1 minus 1 over 13. Now what is that going to equal here? Well, let's break out the calculator. And I have 1 over 1, enter. So when I have it in parentheses, I like to hit the enter button to actually like calculate what's in the parentheses. So naturally that's just 1, 1 divided by 1 minus 1 divided by 13, enter. Okay, so this whole thing, 1 over 1 minus 1 over 13 equals 0 0.923. 0 0.9230, and then there's more stuff. I'm just going to write down a few more digits here, 0 0.0769. Now, what does this equal? This equals 1 over s and what I'm trying to solve for is this synodic period s <laughs> sorry you can hear a bird in the background there so um, I'm trying to solve for s so how do I do that well to get s all by itself here I need to basically flip this fraction over I mean you could think about this a few different ways okay one is like um, just doing algebra okay so if I wanted to get s by itself I could multiply this side by s, and then I multiply this side by s, all right, and the s's cancel on this side, and now I want to get s by itself, so I'd have to divide both sides by this long number, 0 0.9230769, so now what do I have over here, I have just 1, so this is going to be 1 divided by this big number, 0 0.923. Okay, so you can do the algebra. But I can get the same result if I, if I realize that when I have one over something, if I wanna flip it around, okay, I could take, I could take, um, it's basically taking the inverse. Okay, so I have one over S. 
I can take the inverse of it, which basically means taking one over that value. Sometimes we write that as raising it to the power of negative one. All right, if I raise the both sides to the power of negative one, that's basically like flipping both of them over. I don't know if that makes any sense to you what I'm, what I'm talking about. Okay, but I guess what I'm trying to say, like I'll do it over here, like with other math. Okay, if I have one um, over a smiley face, okay, equals a palm tree, I guess it looks more like a regular tree. Okay, one over a smiley face equals a palm tree. Then, if I wanna flip these things around, okay, this is the same as saying smiley face equals one over palm tree. All right, and you can plug in any numbers you want for that, but that's the nature of these relationships. If you flip one over, then the other one gets flipped over one. Okay, they get, that's the inverse relationship we're talking about here. So what does it mean for this actual equation? It means you get this value here. So sorry, just to go back, I know that was kind of long tangent here. So this is what we end up with, one over s equals this number. Then s just equals one divided by that number, 0 0.9230769. So when you do these calculations, right, you're gonna find this crazy number and to get the, the value you want, you have to take the inverse of it. Now you could type in your calculator one divided by and then type it all, but the shortcut is that most calculators have an inverse button. It looks just like this, one over x, or yours, if it's like a graphing calculator, might have a, a little symbol that's to the power of negative one. And if you just click that button, booyah, that's, that's the calculation that does one over that value, it takes the reciprocal. So 1.0833 is our answer in this case. Now just to convince you of that, 1.0833, okay, I can actually type this into my calculator, and you can do that too if you prefer. You can just type one divided by 0 0.9230769, and you see I get the same thing, 1.08333, okay? So whatever you're most comfortable with with your calculator. Now again, we can double check that this makes sense. Right? We said we'd expect it to be just a little bit more than one year because Jupiter has moved a little bit in that time. All right? Okay, let's do the next problem. Suppose scientists discover a new mini planet just beyond Earth's orbit that takes 1.05 years to orbit the sun. How long would it take this mini planet to move once all the way around our sky? Now I kind of think that these drawings are kind of helpful here just in terms of what to expect because these are such weird problems. It's like, well, I don't know what to expect. So here's the sun again. Now here's Earth. And now this planet's just a tiny bit further than Earth and because we know that because it only takes a tiny bit longer to orbit the Earth. So now check this out. In the time it takes Earth to go around once, how far around will this planet have gone? Well, in a year, it'll have gone almost the whole way. It takes a year, 0 0.05. So after one year, it's gotten right there. Now here's the thing, like, so essentially what I'm trying to figure out is how long is it gonna take the Earth to go around and catch up to this planet, right? So here's the second year. In the second year, I'll do a little different color here. Here, Earth now goes around again. It still hasn't caught up because this guy was right here behind the Earth. And now, hello, now it's still behind the Earth just a little bit. So it's actually gonna take a lot of time for the Earth to actually go around, 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 and around, and around to catch up to this guy. So conceptually, I would expect that this, this would take quite a long time. Now you might, that might not be obvious to you, it might not make sense why that would be the case, but it, you could draw these little pictures to try to give you a sense of like, well, how, how big should this number be? Okay, so let's do the math though. So same idea here, for Earth, I have 1.0 years. For the planet, I have 1.05 years. And here's my side, synodic period, one over s equals, and I'm gonna do my parentheses again, 
1 over 1 minus 1 over 1.05. Okay, and let's calculate this. And now I'll kind of do my shortcut that I just showed you. So 1 over 1 minus 1 over 1.05, enter. And I get this small value. I want to take 1 over that, or the reciprocal, or the inverse. So I'll use my inverse button. Boom. What do I get? I get 21 years. Now that might at first seem like crazy long, like that's impossible. But if we think about this drawing, right, and two cars that are going almost the exact same speed, how long is it going to take one to lap the other one? It's going to take a really long time. Versus in Jupiter's case, we had a really slow car way out in the outer reaches of the solar system, right, moving much slower. So to lap that car was pretty, pretty easy. All right, let's look at question three. If it takes Mars two and a half years to orbit the sun, how long in years will it take Mars to go once around the sky as viewed from the Earth? Okay, so now we can start getting good at these problems because you'll see you're being asked very similar questions every time here. So again, Earth is just one year. That's our sidereal period for Mars, our planet. It'll be two and a half years. Okay, and so then we can find our synodic period. Now again, this this matters when we're trying to figure out like how planets are moving in our night sky. Okay, so I have 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2.5. So sometimes you'll hear like, um, oh, Mars is really bright, right? You're hearing like, oh, this is going to be the brightest Mars. Mars is as close as it's been in all this time. And then you don't hear about that for a while. Well, what we're calculating is how long in between, in a sense, Mars at its best that we see, because that's when Mars is the closest and the brightest. So we can calculate that, and it is. Um, there's my worst equal sign. Okay. So 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2.5. Enter 0.06. I'm going to take the inverse of that to solve for s. So I'll just show you that one last time here. If I'm writing out all the math, I would say 1 over s equals 0 0.6. And so s equals 1 over 0 0.6, which equals 1 1.66666, 1.67 years. All right, so that would be our answer. All right, let's take a look then at questions four and five. Okay, now we've got Venus. And it says here it takes Venus 0.7 years to orbit the sun. How long in years will it take Venus to come back to its original place in our night sky? So let's take a look at this one. Now I'm going to intentionally do this the exact same way as I did the previous ones and you'll see that it doesn't work out quite right. All right? So if you do this the same way you would say p equals 0 0.7 which notice the change here this is actually less than the Earth's for the first time. All the other ones were larger than the Earth's. Okay, So the Earth will be 1. Now if I do this the wrong way all right, it'll be 1 over s equals 1 over Earth minus 1 over P. This is if we did it all the same way every time. All right. And what do I get then? I get 1 over Earth is 1 over 1 minus 1 over 0 0.7. Now let's type that into our calculator and see what we get. 1 over 1 minus 1 over 0 0.7. And you'll see what we get is actually a negative number. Negative 0 0.4285. Negative 0 0.4285. And so I take the inverse of that, and what do I get? Inverse, I get negative 2.3 years. And it's like, well, what, what does that even mean? Right? Negative 2.33 years. And that's where we run into issues with the, the, the negative, right? 
Um, and so technically, if I wanted to do this um, correctly, I would actually just flip around these two uh, places here, right? If you just switch one over P and one over E, then you'll get the same numerical answer, but it will be positive, right? The thing is, it doesn't actually change the number of your answer. You get the same, um, the same value. And a, a period of negative years doesn't make any sense, right? So, um, so you can't, you don't, you don't have to switch it around. You can just do it the same every single time. And if you get a negative answer, then you just know that that's should be made positive. Two point three three years. Um, or if you recognize that, wait, this is closer than than the Earth to the Sun, you can switch them around. Um, to make it positive instead. The key is that you're taking the difference between the two um, ratios. I don't know, does that satisfy you? Is that a satisfactory explanation? I'm pretty sure our reading, well, I, don't, I actually don't know offhand. I know, um, all right, here you go. So this was not required reading, but this is a, a link from the reading that you, you did have, which derives those two equations. And you'll see it uses a fair bit of trigonometry to do that derivation. And um, it, it explains it this way. It just says that for an inferior planet like Venus or, or Mercury, you just interchange those two values because Earth would have the outer orbit. So the idea is just like, well, Earth is now the outer planet and um, the other planet's the inner planet. So you just flip them. So I guess that's a reasonable explanation. Um, and I'm glad we don't have to derive these equations ourselves. It's not insanely difficult, but it's certainly beyond the math that we would be asked to do in, in our course. Okay, so like I said, um, you don't have to flip them because if you get a negative value, then you just make it positive. So let's take a look here for Mercury. And um, in keeping with that practice, let's just keep it uh, as it is. We just focus on one equation rather than thinking about flipping them around. So got the planet is 0.21 years. Earth is one year, and uh, I've got my synodic period here. We'll just say one over one minus one over 0 0.21 equals, and one over one minus one over 0 0.21, enter, negative 3.76. Remember, I gotta take the inverse of that, inverse, and I get, negative, well, it's going to be positive, 0 0.2658 years. Okay, again, we can ask ourselves if that makes sense. 2658. All right, I can ask if that makes sense. I've got, I've got the sun, I've got Mercury right here, I've got Earth out here now. Mercury goes around in 0.21 years. Okay, during that time, the Earth has moved a bit, and so it has to go a little further, and so I get beyond 0.21, I get to this 0.265. So it does make sense, at least to me it does. Okay, so I hope, hopefully that's uh, helpful as we go through these problems, and um, of course you're always welcome to ask me questions if they, if they pop up.